You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramat Beit Shemesh Israel 5780, 2020. This week's Parsha is Parsha's bow. And before I begin, I just want to mention first of all, my daughter Hadassah is right here, my two and a half year old, and she is playing very, very nicely and quietly on the floor. So you may hear some background noise. Um, number two, I have a brand new album that I'm working on. Very important, powerful messages, spiritual messages of bitachon, of trust in Hashem, of coming close to Hashem. And you can be part of this. Help me out. It's so important. I appreciate all those who have already contributed. AriGoldwag.com slash new album. And it's a tremendous help. And it's tremendously important at this time because music... It's very easy to get it for, for very cheap or for, for free, and there's not a lot coming in. So I need the help of all of you to be able to continue to make the music. Okay, that being said, let's talk some Divrei Torah. This week's parasha, we have the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. We have the Jews are about to leave Egypt. And what is the foundational concept of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim? So I'd like to share with you a beautiful piece from Rabbi Chaim Friedlander. The idea has to do with Emuna. It has to do with faith in Hashem, belief in Hashem, the idea of bitachon, of trust in Hashem. The Gemara in Makis and the Chavdal brings a Pasuk, which teaches, teaches us that Chavakuk, he came, he was a prophet, and he came and he said that if we wanted to quantify, bring the, the entire Torah, show, show us what is the message of the entire Torah, what are we trying to get at? Where are we trying to lead? Where is Hashem trying to lead us with the commandments? So the answer is emuna. It's to get us to a level of faith in Hashem, trust in Hashem, belief and confidence in the fact that He wants only our best. But there is Harishonim, says Reb Chaim Frilly, and that in the, in the previous generations, Kol mitzvah adam shlemus. All the commandments, each individual commandment, had the ability to bring a person to a certain level of completion. By the time Chavaku came along, so the hearts of people had become lessened. What is it that is the essential mitzvah, which when we work on that mitzvah, so then we have the ability to find what it is or reach the level that Hashem wishes from, from us? It's focusing on Amunah. It's focusing on our faith in Hashem and our belief that He does everything for our good. Okay? This is very interesting, very powerful. Uh, we're going to see what He says, but I also want to point out, every single day we have a mitzvah of Zechir Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, of remembering the exodus from Egypt. So it is something which is essential. It's something that happened 3,300 years ago. It's a long time ago. And yet, it's something that speaks to us today, every single day. Why? Why is it something that speaks to us and is so important to us? Because it means that Hashem, first of all, cares about us, cares about the Jewish people on a national level, wants to save the Jewish people, wants to redeem the Jewish people from their difficulties, from their suffering. But it also, because obviously there's a message in every, everything that the Torah asks us to do. So the Torah is asking us to, to remember Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim every day. It means that there's a personal message to me every single time I read about Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, mention Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, when we make Kiddush on Friday night, we mention Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, the, the exodus from Egypt, because it means that there's something personal to me when it comes to the idea of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim, which is that Hashem wants my good. The challenges and difficulties that the Jewish people endured in their time in Egypt was so that they could have a redemption, and they could have an, um, an amazing revelation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of God, and it's the same thing for each individual person. That's the message of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. It's the message of Emuna, the importance of belief, of faith and confidence, bitachon, that Hashem is doing everything that He does for us. All of the things that we go through in our lives are ultimately for our good. Okay? So that's so important. Emuna hi mitzvah tadiris. Says Rechaim Friedlander, Emuna, faith, is a constant mitzvah. There's an obligation for us to believe all the time it's not like other mitzvahs for example lulav, esrog, building a sukkah lighting a Hanukkah menorah these have a certain specific time when we do them not so when it comes to Amuna. Amuna is something which we need to have all the time there's an obligation every moment to believe to have faith in Hashem that God is doing only for our good 
It's not just that a person has the ability, it's possible to have a nice, you know, an optimistic attitude. That's not what this mitzvah is. This mitzvah is an obligation on us to have a positive attitude and to believe that Hashem, to, to know and to believe that Hashem is doing for our good. It would seem, says Rebbechem Friedland, that if a person has the proper outlook, an outlook of amuna of faith, so he believes that God is there, he believes that there is a God in the world, so then he's always fulfilling the commandment. He says, seeing that Hashem is involved in my life, that's one detail in the mitzvah of amuna. Shlemus ha'amuna in a hashkafa, having a perfected level of amuna, having you know fulfilling this command properly is not just about having an outlook, having a positive outlook, believing, looking for Hashem in our lives. It's deeper than that. Amuna hainu lchiyos amuna. It means amuna means that we live with amuna. What does that mean? Shekol erech hachaim hu mushtas al yidais boynos to dirus vechizik to diri. The entire foundation of our lives needs to be a constant awareness and a constant uh, strengthening within ourselves of emuna and living that way, living based on it, taking action based on our emuna. I heard recently that uh, if a person wants to work on bitachon, there are different ways to do it. I've discussed it in the past. Mentioned, you know, you can have psukim that you speak about. You you remind yourself during the day. But another way, which I also mentioned, I believe, it's to give tzedakah. I heard this. From a, in a certain shir, give tzedakah. When I give tzedakah, what holds me back from giving charity? I think, you know, like this money, I, I don't know how I'm going to pay for my own food. I have to give, give away my money to tzedakah, to charity, to a poor person. But the Torah wants us to indeed show that we believe that Hashem is the one who provides our sustenance. If I give tzedakah, it doesn't take away from me. All the way around, I'm going to end up with more. Because I become a conduit for blessings to come into the world. I become a conduit to bring blessings to somebody else. So the tzedakah that I give, the charity that I give, ends up bringing me more money. I actually experienced this yesterday. My shul was doing a crowdfunding to raise 1.6 million shekels. We raised over 1.8 million in order to build a brand new building for our shul. And it was, very, it was really amazing. Yesterday I got... I hadn't gotten uh, too many contributors over the past few days to my own crowdfunding, but all of a sudden there was like, I mean, I did a few things with Hashem Salva, Hashem put the ideas in my head, but all of a sudden I was involved in the crowdfunding for my shul. I was trying to help. I had a positive energy. There was an optimism. There was a, a sense of, uh, of bitachen, that Hashem is going to help us with our shul. And all of a sudden I felt like it spilled over into my own crowdfunding. A whole bunch of people... Uh, some, some people who I contacted previously, some people who I contacted yesterday, gave to my crowdfunding. When a person, when a person is involved in tzedakah, so the, the blessings come through him. That was my experience yesterday. True story. The emuna, the faith has to be living inside of him, inside of his heart. And the result of that is, it's going to express itself also in one's actions. The person changes, not just inside of his mind. It can't be that a person is only changing in their mind. It can't be an intellectual exercise, talking about bitachon, talking about faith in God, talking about amuna. It needs to be something that causes a person's actions to change. Haridvaz Kotev, the Ridvaz writes, amuna, the idea of Amuna is that it be set inside of a person's heart and his soul constantly. Ubir Maybe Rabbi Agoin Rav Dessler, Zetzal. Rav Dessler explains, Mishena Oisek, one second, I lost the spot. Mishena Oisek Betmidus, the Var Ulalamid Laatzmai Samuna Bashem is Barak. If a person doesn't constantly work, you have to work on clarifying and, and teaching oneself to believe in Hashem. To know that everything he does is for my good. If I don't work on it, I'm never going to know it for real. It's never, gonna ha- it's never going to take root in me. The mitzvah, the Torah says, the ten, first of the Ten Commandments, I am Hashem your God. I took you out of Egypt. 
Right? Hashem is saying, you got to remember that constantly. You have to believe it. You have to feel it. You have to live that way. You have to act that way. When it comes to Amuna, it needs to express itself in Bitachan, in the in the action of Bitachan in Hashem. What is the idea? He brings the Rabbeinu Yoyna in Mishlei, Perk Yud Gimel, Pasuk Chavav. The Rabbeinu Yoyna says, you want to know what is the explanation, what is the concept of Bitachan? Bitachan doesn't just mean belief in God. It means confidence in Hashem. Batuach, I am positive, I am confident. The idea of Bitachan is the foundation of Emuna. It's the foundation of... Hello there. Can you put this on the baby? Yes. Let me see if I can. Hold on, everybody. I don't know if this crown is going to fit on the baby. No, it doesn't seem to go on. I'm sorry. Maybe it goes on a different Playmobil, okay? Sorry about that. Okay. So let's let's get back here. Let's focus. He says, Says the Pasuk. Says the Pasuk. Trust in Hashem, trust in Hashem, and do good. Shechan Eretz, Re'eyemuna. Dwell in the land and be a shepherd of faith. Re'eyemuna. What is a person, what, there's an idea of shepherding, right? Shepherding is taking care of a flock. And that requires constant attention. Just like watching a child requires constant attention, right? In order to have bitachin, in order to have faith, in order to have confidence in Hashem, how does one get there? It requires constant attention. Through the fact that a person is involved constantly, he's shepherding his emuna. he's acting like a, a, someone in charge of a flock. He's constantly watching over and protecting his flock. No matter what the situation is, by a person reinforcing within himself his emuna, his faith in Hashem, a filo b'matzav shel artzius, who chays Hashem is baruch b'tadirus. Even if a person is in a material circumstance, here we are living in this world, we're a spiritual being having a physical experience, right? So here we are, constantly thinking about Hashem, constantly thinking about emuna, constantly thinking about spirituality. That's how a person reaches a confidence in Hashem. Az kol ma'isiv yishar v'aseitayv person follow I'm, I'm always following I, I like to see the numbers I want to see how many views my videos are having I want to see how how you know the the results of the efforts that I put in there's a shtadlis in the world I'm, I'm not on that awesome level of living be talking without a shtadlis without any efforts but I want to see I want to see Hashem I always talk to HaKadosh Baruch when I say Hashem I want to see that you are doing it I want to see, I, I want to do a shtadlis, but, but I want you to produce greater results than my efforts. So, I'm looking and I'm seeing and I'm saying, wow, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, here, here are my needs. I see how much money I need. I see how, you know, I need to cover my, my mortgage. I need to cover my bills. I need to cover this and that. And I see how HaKadosh Baruch Hu often to the shekel, down to the shekel, provides for me exactly what I need. It's an amazing thing. So by constantly being aware of it, by constantly thinking about it, by constantly talking about it, that's how we develop bitachon. If I see that Hashem is always taking care of me, He's always taking care of me. For 40 years, Hashem has taken care of me every single day of my life. Provides for me, provides for my children, provides for my family. So then, as we watch that occur, it strengthens us. As we constantly think about it, it's called Masiv Yishon Vaseitoiv. By thinking about this, by being aware of this, but then what happens? The Pasuk says, Trust in Hashem and do good. It has to have an expression in my actions. I have to act differently. Now that I believe in Hashem, now that I have confidence in Hashem. And he adds, Vida, says the Rabbeinu Yoyna, Vida ki habitachen. You should know that the bitachen in Hashem it's a strengthening of my heart 
that Hashem is going to save me. Hashem is going to help me. And depending on it, truly depending on it, like the Pasuk says, you believe in Hashem and you depended on Him. When the faith of a person, when the belief that I have, I, I'm aware, I know, Hashem is going to help me. When that is really strong, within the person who it lifts a person up in his level of bitachon, his level of faith, his level of confidence in Hashem. His heart is strengthened. How many times have I seen Hashem save me? How many times have I seen that Hashem has helped me? How many times have I seen that Hashem has provided for me? How many times have I seen that something was wrong, some, some difficulty I had, whatever it was, some challenge that I had, and it worked out in the end. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was there for me. God was there for me. Chazal Amru. Our sages say it's a Gemara in Saito, Dachman Chesam, and Beis, which 48b. Pasku an Emona. That there are no longer are people who have true emuna in the world, as it was in previous generations. Amr Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak says, Eil b'nei Adam she'im aminu m'kudu shabricha. What is the idea of an Amona, which really means faithful people? It means these are the people who, it's referring, says Rabbi Yitzchak, to people who really believe in God. Because of Rashi, Rashi says an amazing thing. Does a person have the ability to spend extra money on something which, uh, what's the difference? How nice my mezuzah is written. It says, uh, it's, it's a little bit more expensive, a little bit cheaper. What's the difference? A nice esrog, a more expensive esrog. It's a duck, I have to give away all my money to charity. Why does a person think that way? A person needs to be willing to give up his money to perform commandments in a beautiful way. Will it stuck it to give charity? Will it sus will it say Shabbos Spend money on Shabbos, spend money on Yantif, on the festivals. That's Rashi. Now Rabchaim says, Rashi Mazvirsha Emuna Srichalisbatis Maisin. Rashi is telling us that our Amun, our faith, it needs to translate into action. It needs to translate, it needs to change the way that we do things. Person needs to depend on Hashem's guarantee. Hashem promises. If you aser, Chazal says aser b'shvil shetis aser. We're going to see that here. When you give meiser, when you give a tenth of your income to charity, Hashem promises, I will give you that money back. You'll get rich. You'll get more. So in order to do that, I need to have faith. I need to believe in Hashem's promise. And that means that we need to take a chance. We find that there are three cases, three instances, three mitzvahs, that there's a promise that we will not lose out if we perform them properly. Chazal say you're allowed to spend up to a third of your income. Or actually, I don't want to say a third of your income. Until a third. I'm not sure exactly what that means. It's a Gemara Baba Kama Daftes. Check it out. You're allowed to spend up to a third. It could be of the value of the thing, whatever it is. But the idea is that a person has the ability to spend this money, extra money, on making a miss more beautiful. There's a promise. Whatever Rashi says, whatever a person spends extra, up to a third extra, on that thing, on the hither that's making it more beautiful, Hashem will pay him back. Like we said, give off your tithes, you'll get rich. There's a pasuk, there's a verse. Pasuk says, You can test me in this. Hashem says, Hashem, you're going to see, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. I'm going to pour out blessings upon you. We find that Hashem, when He makes a gzera, makes a decree on a person for the entire year, how much he's supposed to have, how much he's supposed to, you know, what's his parnasa going to look like, what's his livelihood going to look like. But it doesn't include what he spends on Shabbos and Yontif. Whatever he spends on the festivals, on the Sabbath, that's not in the Cheshben. So there's a promise here. Whatever you spend on those things, you don't lose out. So that's the idea here. So it has to translate into action. Now he says, Parshish shall you see us in time, Hain Beta Sefer La Amuna. You want to know what's the school? Where do we learn about Amuna, about faith in Hashem? This is it. This is the Parshish. We're in those Parshish. Yitzhiya Smith's time. 
the exodus from Egypt. Hashem says to us, and we read it, the Ten Commandments, the first of the Ten Commandments, the, the most foundational concept, I am Hashem your God, I took you out of Egypt. We constantly come back to that idea that Hashem took us out of Egypt. We believe in, with full faith, with full amuna that Hashem cares about us. He sees our suffering, He takes us out of that suffering. Because when we recognize that Hashem is, was involved, and not involved, He was the one who oversaw the Exodus. Through that, these, these, these stories, when you read about these occurrences from 3,300 years ago, they're not old stories, they're fresh to us. They're real to us because they're personal. They get into our guts because they make a difference. That's because they're true for us. Personally, every single one of us. That's what brings us by remembering it's Yitzhak Mitzrayim, by remembering our personal exodus, by remembering our personal salvation that Hashem has done for us, and by remembering the, the national salvation Hashem did for us in those times and is doing us in, these, in our times as well. Amazing times we're living in. Amazing times of national salvation. That reminds us Hashem is our God. Hashem cares about us on a national level. Hashem cares about us on a personal level. Because a nation is only made up, it's the total of the sum of its parts, but all of those individuals are part of who Hashem cares about. And Hashem cares about each and every one of us. Because of our Ramban, the Ramban writes at the end of our Parsha, Each time it says in a verse, that Hashem wants why did he perform all these miracles? Why did he make these plagues? I want you to know that I am Hashem in the midst of the earth. It's not like Hashem just created the earth and then, you know, uh, you know, let it roll on its own. No, Hashem is personally involved in everything that goes on in this world. We need to believe in His divine, divine providence for every single individual. This is how we fulfill. We have to believe in Hashem. We have to know that He sees everything. He cares about every single action that we take. Every single thing that I do, He's watching me. Not in a negative sense. He cares about me. He cares about me. And yes, I have a responsibility as well because of that to do what's right. Because Hashem cares. He cares about me. I have a relationship with Him. It's a dynamic relationship. When you have a relationship with a, with a spouse, with a child, there's a give and take. It matters what I do. It matters how I treat them. If I, if I expect to have respect for my children, I need to treat them with a certain, uh, in a certain way. I need to have a certain respect for them as well. I need to obviously guide them. And sometimes I need to be a firm parent. But... There needs to be a, a, it's, there's a give and take. And it's true in my relationship with Hashem, Lahavdil, in my relationship with God. I need to have a respect for Him, knowing that He cares about me, knowing that He's involved in my life personally. I also have to, as a result of that, act differently. I have to be, in, I have to be more cognizant of His, of His presence. He sees every single thing that a person does, He recognizes what's inside of a person's heart. If you don't believe that Hashem took us out of Egypt, if I don't believe that Hashem took me out of America, brought me to Eretz Yisrael, so to speak, my own personal geula, whatever it is, my own personal redemption, if I don't believe that, then I don't believe that He's really, he's really the God who's in charge of the entire world. That's not a complete unification of Hashem. This is the unique thing that the Jewish people have. It's our advantage over all the other nations of the world. And perhaps we could say that they need to learn from us, that we need to be a light into those nations. That we rec- this is the foundation of the entire Torah. We recognize that Hashem is personally involved in our lives. Hashem is personally involved in our national lives. Hashem is personally involved in everything that we do. He cares about what we do, and He cares that we succeed. He quotes this Pasuk as well, that the entire purpose of the Torah is to get us to a place of amuna, of faith, of belief in God. And not just belief as we said, but it has to express itself in our actions. Our actions need to change because of our belief, because of our faith. That's all for today. I want to bless you. I ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us 
to look for and see our personal redemptions and remember, of course, the national redemptions of the, of the Jewish people, both 3,300 years ago until current times, the amazing redemption that we're seeing, the return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel, the amazing things that are going on in the world today with all that's going on with the recognition that's being given to, to the Jewish people within the land of Israel. It's amazing to see. Amazing to see. We need to recognize that Hashem is personally involved through His divine providence, moving all the pieces of the, on the chessboard into their place. Hashem should help us to recognize that, to see that, to take it to heart, and that it should, it should translate for us into different actions based on our true faith and confidence in Hashem. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.